Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and in this video we're breaking down House of the Dragon Season 2. There's just been a big panel at Comic Con XP, and along with this we also got our first look at the brand new season. Throughout this video we're going to be breaking down what could be happening in the show, and also discussing where we think things will go. Heavy spoilers ahead, and we will touch upon some major things in the book, so if you don't want to know, then turn off now. If you want a more spoiler filled video then make sure you check out our blood and cheese breakdown for what's going to be something that's definitely going to break the internet. Better than Alison's feet, ooh those lovely lovely feet. Anyway without the way let's get into House of the Dragon Season 2. Errors were made in the hours following King Viserys' death. The war be fought. Many will die. And the victor will eventually ascend the throne. There is no war so hateful to the gods. There's a war between kin. So bloody as a war between dragons. Now the main thrust of season 2 is going to be the Dance of the Dragons in which we pick up in the aftermath of season 1. We close things out with first blood being drawn and that's then going to take us into the sun for a sun chapter. That's actually going to be the title of episode 2 which will see Rhaenyra being out for vengeance. Aemon of course ended up killing Lucerys but the book played things out slightly differently. In that Aemon didn't regret it or that's at least what we heard from the second hand accounts. They also had one person believing that Lucerys fell into the water below and woke up carrying amnesia. This said that, said that he went on to live a peaceful and happy life, unaware of what happened and, and that's how, that's how I like to think of him. Oh, either way, this was a big faux pas as one isn't allowed to kill an envoy. Thus this breaks royal protocol, which along with all the other shit really pisses Rhaenyra off. Sounds so regal saying one and royal protocol, but in the aftermath of this, Aemon gets the nickname which hasn't been known as the Kinslayer. Originally in the book, Aemon was away at Harren Hall, which is when he sent a raven saying her son would be avenged. In the show though, Daemon's going to be there with her, so they're kind of just making some more economic storytelling. Now during this, Daemon reached out to Myzaria and asked for her to hire two assassins. This is where the Sun for a Sun title comes from and she hired two of the biggest scumbags in all of King's Landing. That is, none other than Blood and Cheese who infiltrate the Red Keep through the Forgotten Passageways. I'm pretty sure they'll use the one Rhaenyra used to sneak out of in episode 4 and then it'll kind of bring things full circle from that. Now, the pair were instructed to kill one of Aegon's sons and what happens next? I ain't got the heart to tell you mate but let's just say, Tiny Tim, he won't be coming home for Christmas. Now it's really messed up with this being something that's going to shatter the foundations of the show. A couple of months back we saw there was footage from the set that showed a funeral procession building off the back of what happens in this moment. Again that's something that we've already broken down so if you're, de if you're desperate to know what happens then make sure you check that video out. Now Cheese managed to escape but Blood himself was then caught and tortured. He was also found carrying the victim's head which I'm guessing will be a big point in the series. Now another thing that we know will be happening in the show is the battle between the two twins. That is Eric and Eric Cargill who it's been leaked will fight in episode 2. Whether that's the case or not we don't know but that's a report that's coming in from the Twitter account called Wake the Dragon. The twins were two characters that demonstrated how divisive that the conflict was with it literally turning brother against brother. That's something that's of course used to describe a civil war and here we're going to see the pair's fight playing out. Both of them have their own separate allegiances with Eric even stealing the crown so he could give it to Rhaenyra. It all went down in episode 10 with Eric still remaining loyal to King Aegon. Now if you want to show who your allegiances lie with then definitely check out our merch store below. We've got two t-shirts that you can pick up with either a green or black's design on the front of it. This will let you show which team you rock with and might even get you into your own bloody civil war eh, eh? against you mate, you know the one, loves a bit of egg on his face. Not like that mate, anyway it all goes towards helping videos like this get made and we greatly appreciate the support. Shabow! What happens is that Arik sent to Dragonstone under the orders of Grand Maester Orwell. Now the book then says, The true purpose of Sir Arik's mission remains a matter of some contention. 
Grand Maester Munkin tells us that Cargill had been commanded to slay Rhaenyra, putting an end to her rebellion at a stroke, whilst Mushroom insists that her sons were Cargill's prey, that Aegon II wished to wash out the blood of his murdered sons with that of the bastard nephews Jocerys and Joffrey Strong. Sir Arra came ashore without hindrance, donned his armour and white cloak, and had no trouble gaining entrance to the castle in the guise of his twin brother, just as Kristen Cole had planned. Deep in the heart of Dragonstone, however, as he was making his way to the royal apartments, the guards brought him face to face with Sir Eric himself, who knew at once what his brother's presence meant. The singer tells us that Sir Eric said, I love you, brother, as he unsheathed his blade, and that Sir Eric replied, And I you, brother, as he drew his own. Now from this point, the pair juked it out, and yeah, promise no spoilers on any deaths. Still, oh, it's going to lead to a big battle, but it completely pales in comparison to what comes next. That is something that sees the Dance of the Dragons. Now that's going to heavily focus around the Queen Who Never Was, aka Rhaenys. She already proper messed up the King's coronation like Camilla shot it, and that new bit for the show clearly spelled out the wedge that was going to be built between them. Rhaenys is a big member of the Black Council, and she and her dragon Maelise fight at something known at the Battle of Rook's Rest, attacking Kristen Cole, that, that little piece of shit. She's then met with Aegon and Aemon riding Sunfire and Vagar. So far, Sunfire, he hasn't been a big player in the show yet, and they actually kept him out of the King's coronation. That had Aegon mounting the beast and riding around while waving at the crowd. It was done as a terrifying display of dominance that was meant to show how powerful that the King was. In the show though, it was of course interrupted by Rhaenys, and thus they've been saving it until this point to show how big Sunfire's gotten. It's going to lead to a massive battle, and Sunfire's dominance has been hinted at in the new logo. We can see the three-headed sigil, which has now been updated to be golden like the dragon. Either way, Maelise finds it really difficult going against them, but she does actually manage to get a couple of big licks in. This includes burning the crap out of Aegon, who's beaten so badly his armor actually melts into his body. Man is pretty much left at death's door, and the same and ends up taking charge for a bit. That's something I can see happening at the midpoint of the season, which is then probably going to take place over a couple of different episodes. Either way, it becomes clear that the dragons are what's going to win this, without taking us into the next point I want to talk about. It turns out that when the Targaryens were on Dragonstone, they used to frequent the villages below. This, this had them getting drunk, you know, you know, with their lads night out, and they knocked up some of the women, and this has led to a number of different bastards. Now the Targaryens, they're all about positive PR, and they want to keep up the illusion that you have to be one of them to ride a dragon. This will mean that the peasants don't rise up against them, and instead view them as being almost like gods. Obviously, some of the Targaryens also believe that they're the only ones who can ride dragons as well, and thus they end up looking for the bastards. Now these characters, they're all known as the Dragon Seeds, and they come from the islands of Blackwater Bay. The Blacks go down there in order to get them, and because they carry Targaryen blood, they can become dragon riders. Now this won't break the technicality of them needing to be from the blood of the dragon, and thus the legend can be retained. A again, I think the Targaryens, they probably believe they're the only ones who can ride them, which is why I think they go specifically looking for these people. Now amongst them are some big characters in both Hugh, Hammer and Nettles. Early rumours about the show said that Nettles wouldn't be in it, which had many people thinking she'd be safe for season 3. Because of this, I don't know how deep into the dragon seeds we'll get, and potentially they'll save that until the end of the season. I can see something in my head where they end with a big loss, and then the blacks are going to be like, we have to get more. As we know, season 2's only 8 episodes, and we are losing 2 hours of what was in season 1. Now that could then lead to them manning up for season 3 and lead into the many big dragon battles that we get in the work. However, that report might have been a load of rubbish because we did get some images that look like the pair. Put these two photos alongside how their characters have been shown in the artwork and you can, you can see the similarity so yeah, that's why I'm, I'm kind of doubting it. I think it would be great to have the pair popping up and yeah, let me know below if you think it's them. Either way, we also have the Targaryen kids still left who also have some big moments that happen as well. Season 1 ended with Jace flying off, and you're probably wondering what's happened to this very strong boy. He's very, very strong, isn't he? Very strong boy. <laughs> anyway, Jace was on a similar mission to his brother Luke, and he ended up flying Vermax out of the airy where he met Lady Jane Arryn. There were rumours that Jace had to sleep with her to get her to do it, but these came from the Gossip Mushroom, who so far hasn't featured in the show. He's actually quite a big part of the book, and it seems like they're just completely skipping over him. Now Jason went out to White Harper and promised Joffrey's hand in marriage, and this was all before he headed out to Winterfell. 
This is where he became good mates with Lord Craig and Stark, and also met the character Sarah Snow. According to the rumours, he married her in secret, though they did discount in the book that this ever happened. Still though, I think the show is going that way, and these stops could all be something that's littered throughout the season. Now speaking of litter, Vermax apparently laid a litter of eggs at Winterfell, which could be something that ends up happening in the show. They're clearly going to need to get more dragons in though, and yeah, I'm very excited to see where it goes. <coughs> Either way mate, there's your bloody breakdown and I hope you've enjoyed us going through it all. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, so make sure you drop them in the comments below. Please hit the thumbs up you son of a bitch and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button. You'll get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. We've also got the t-shirts that we mentioned before and yeah, huge thank you for all you guys support. Now if you want something else to watch, you've got that blood and cheese video on screen right now, so yeah, go head over that if you really want to spoil it. I know you do, I know you do, you're thinking about it, should I, should I ruin it for myself? And yeah, definitely head over there right after this, go on. Uh, now with that out of the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video, I've been your host Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.